Welcome to Vet Talk. This is your boy, Brother Vince. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Good people, good people, veterans. What's going on? Family members, what's going on? How y'all doing today? Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode of Vet Talk. This is your boy. What's good? What's good? Hey, man, thank y'all for coming through, man. So today, man, I'm going to take y'all through the pack at and I want y'all to just basically follow me, man, because most veterans out there, I know some of y'all, y'all have a hard time with retaining information due to PTSD and other related issues, man. So what I want to do is, man, I just want to go through with you and just basically take you to VA.gov, which is where I went to get this information from, because again, I wanted to make sure that I give you valid information. I don't want to give you what I think. I don't want to give you what I assume. I want to give you what I saw. And what I saw was that the VA has finally recognized the burn pit and toxic substance that have affected our veterans. Us, you, I, we, as it affected us in many ways. And now because of that, because of that registry we filled, registry we filled out some years ago, the VA has actually open up this act to help us to apply for our benefits. And the reason why they did this was because of a gentleman named Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson. They honored their promise to him to address the Comprehensive Top Tox Toxics Act. And because of that, they added 20 new presumptive conditions for burn pit and other toxic exposures. And now this thing actually allows them to do their research so that they can educate themselves, but also educate and take care of us, the veteran. It's a blessing, man. And, you know, most people ask the question, what does it mean to have a presumptive condition for toxic exposure? Um, To get it on VA rating, you must, uh, your disability must be connected to your military service. So if you have a condition that has been caused by your military service, as far as you being around burn pits, or you may not even know that your condition may be something that is a result of the military. Just check out your job description, because in most people's job descriptions, we're going to automatically be eligible for these presumptive conditions. I was a diesel mechanic when I was in Afghanistan. I was around burn pits Um, as far as, you know, just us burning trash and different things. I know when I was in Afghanistan, man, one of the ways that they destroyed the feces was they would burn it. So, you know, you may be one of those people who went through that situation or you may have a situation that may not even be, you know, something I've said. But do your research and find out what conditions may make you eligible for it. But they have an, a law and a regulation that, you know, they consider um, when looking at the, you know, presumptive conditions. And I'm going to take you through and show you some of the new lists to show you that new list of things that they added so that you can basically, you know, get the help that you need. And if you're a golf war and post 9-11 veteran, these are the, the um these are the things that make you eligible for, you know, um, Basically, you know, being able to file a claim for benefits. You know, this is the list right here. You got brain cancer. You got gastrointestinal cancers. Um, You know what I'm saying? We got all these things right here on this list, man. You know, if you see any of these things on this list right here that I'm scrolling through for you, you know, if you don't even know what some of these things are, like me, some of these words on here, I can't even pronounce the names of all these things up here, but you may be suffering from one of these things on this list. And if you don't know all of the things on this list, look it up. I'm pretty sure there are plenty of channels and there are plenty of resources out there that can help you with this stuff. Because I mean, you can't just say, Oh, I don't have that without researching to find out, you know, please do your research. Don't just assume, make sure that you do a full thorough research and all, and not all the time, Research mean going on YouTube. Please find somebody that may be a doctor. I know of a doctor. I know of a lady named Dr. Janine Ridgeway. 
Again, her name is Dr. Janine Ridgeway. It may cost you, but at the same time, she can help you with these things. She can actually take you through and explain to you what these things are. You know, there are different people out there that you may know of. You may have a daughter, granddaughter, or son, a son-in-law, somebody who may be a doctor. Ask them what these things are. Get the help that you need. Just don't assume that your condition is not up here and then you don't go get the help that you need. And one of the biggest questions that may, many people may ask is, how do I know if I have a presumptive exposure to burn pits? And this right here, this list right here explains to you exactly how you may know. It said, if you have served in any of these conditions at time periods, we determined that you have had, I mean, that you had exposure to a burn pit or other toxics. We call these having a presumptive presumption of exposure. So on or after September 11th, in most people's minds, that's 9-11. These are the places right here. If you was in Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Yabakistan, Yemen, the airspace above any of these locations on or after August 2nd, 1990. In these list locations, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, the United Arab Emirates, the space above the airspace above any of these locations. If you were in any of these locations, you may be eligible for having a presumptive exposure to burn pits. And they ask the, the veterans may ask this question. Am I eligible for free veteran care as a post 9-11 combat veteran? And right here, they explain that they have extended and expanded VA care eligibility based on the packet. And they, they encourage you to apply no matter your separation date. So if separation date was something that you had a question about, right here they says, no matter your separation date, you're eligible to apply. Your, el um, your eligibility um, depends on your service, history, and other factors. So there are some factors that they may be asking you about that, you know, may either allow you to apply or it may stop you and halt you in the situation where you may not be able to apply. And they say, if you meet the list, um, the requirements listed here, you can um, get free VA health care for any conditions related to your service for up to 10 years from the date of your most recent discharge or separation. You can also enroll at any time during the period and get any care you need, but you may owe a copay for some care. So some care, it may cost you just depending on what the situation is. And it says at least... One of these must be true of your active duty service. You served in the theater of combat operation during a period of war after the Persian Gulf, or you served in a combat in combat against an hostile force during a period of hostility after November 11th, 1998. And this must be true of you. You were discharged are released on or after October 1st, 2013. We encourage you to enroll now so that we can provide any care you may need now or in the future. Enrollment is free. It doesn't cost you nothing. So enroll, veteran. And then somebody may ask, what if I was discharged or released before October 1st, 2013? If you meet the requirements listed here, you can receive care and enroll during a special enrollment period between October 1st, 2022 and October 1st, 2023. So starting October 1st of this year until October 1st of next year, for those who were discharged before or released before, released before October 1st of 2013, you have a year to enroll. So if you know of any veteran who may not have, you know, 
apply for these benefits, family members, please get that veteran to the VA before October 1st of 2023. We need you to make sure that these veterans are getting down there and they're, you know, receiving entitlements, the benefits that they not only are entitled to, but they deserve. We read that earlier. They deserve this. So please make sure they get down there and get their due. They, they, they just do. At least one of these must be true of your act. Um, we, so we already read that. And then um, we can scroll down here and it said, and both of these must be true for you. You were discharged or released before September 11th, 2001 and October 1st, 2013. And you haven't enrolled in the VA care before. So this section right here applies to all of those people who haven't enrolled into the VA before. Some of you veterans, you might have already enrolled into the VA healthcare system. So if you've already filled out that registry, you already done your homework, or you done your due diligence by making sure that you go and apply for these benefits, then you're going to already be in the system and this information may, this information won't apply to you. But this is for all of those who didn't apply, which means they aren't receiving compensation. They haven't receive benefits. It applies for all of us, but this specific su um, section is just for those veterans. And then right here, we got the Vietnam era veteran eligibility. This is for most of us, including myself would be my grandfather, would be my father and all of those older, as I say, younger veterans. And what new age orange presumptive conditions will the VA add? Based on the PAC Act, we have added two new Agent Orange presumptive conditions. High blood pressure called hypertension. High blood pressure. So if you have a granddaddy that's suffering from high blood pressure or a grandma who's suffering from high blood pressure, he or she was in the military. Back in the days, you see some old pictures laying around the house. Maybe you need to ask grandma or grandpa, hey, were you in the military? Let them tell you, yeah, yeah, no. And if they were, then you need to get down there with them and help them fill out this paperwork so that they can go down there and apply for compensation for high blood pressure. Then they got monocolony, gamma pathy. I guess that's how you say it. Please excuse me for how I pronounce some of these words. I'm not familiar with a lot of the medical terms. But what I am doing is I'm showing you it so that if you know how to pronounce these words and say it, you can ensure that you're taking your veteran, grandma, grandfather, auntie, uncle, cousin, whoever it is that you know were in the military. And they, after getting out the military, had some issues and conditions that you saw firsthand and you ask them that famous question, Hey, you receiving benefits and they looking at you like what benefits I never received benefits. I don't know what benefits you're talking about. And you say, Hey, are, the, are you being paid by the VA for what you have going on? And they look you in the face and say, no, I don't fool with the VA. I don't mess with the VA. The VA ain't helping me. Then you need to take that person down there and get them this help. Because again, we got a lot of veterans who are out there that need health care that are supposed to be receiving health care and monetary compensation, and they won't go to the VA. They don't want nothing to do with the military. They denied they were in the military. They act like they okay without the military. You need to get them down there so that they can get the help and the compensation that they deserve and they earn. They added new locations for Agent Orange. They added five new locations. Any U.S. or Royal Thai military base in Thailand from January 9th, 1962 through January 30th, 1976. Lois, from December 1st, 1965 through September 30th, 1969. Cambodia at the Memat or Karit Kampong Cham. Province from April 16th, 1969 through April 30th, 1969. Again, if I chewed up some of the words, you read it. 
please take your veteran down there to get them some help. Guam on American Samoa are in the territories water off of Guam or American Samoa from January 9th, 1962 through July 30th, 1980. Then they got Justin Atoll or on a ship that called at Johnston Atoll from January 1st, 1972 through September 30th, 1977. If you serve on active duty in any of these locations, we automatically assume or presume that you have been exposed to Agent Orange. So if you know a veteran who has been exposed to Agent Orange, make sure they go down there and file this paperwork so that they can get paid. They just do. And they added new radioactive presumptive locations. They added three new locations. They, they added these three new responses effort to the list of presumptive locations. Clean up on Equatoc Atoll from nineteen from um January first, nineteen seventy seven through December thirty first, nineteen eighty. The cleanup of Air Force B fifty two bomber carrying nuclear weapons off the coast of Palmaris, Spain, uh, uh, Palmaris, Spain, however you say that, from January 17th, 1966 through March 31st, 1967. If you've responded to fire on board an Air Force bomber carrying nuclear weapons near two Air Force base in Greenland from January 21st, 1968 to September 25th, 1968. If any of these took pl on part, if, if you took part in any of these efforts, we automatically assume or assume that you have, that you were exposed to radiation. So please, 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 family members and veterans, get down there, fight for your benefits. Matter of fact, you know what? They made the fight even easier for you. And right here in this section, man, they explain to you how you can get your benefits. So all you have to do on, on VA.gov, again, this is on VA.gov. All you have to do is go on here, go through these simple instructions, and apply for your benefits. Apply for your benefits. Apply for your benefits. And the reason why I wanted to take y'all through this list and show you some of these things and explain it to you or even, you know, bring up the subject is because, man, one of the things as a veteran I get tired of seeing is I get tired of seeing my brothers and sisters suffer, go through things, and they don't have to do it. They don't have to do it alone. I know there are many of you out there like me. Once you got out the military, you didn't want nothing else to do with it. You said to yourself, I'm done with my military service. I just want to move on with my life. I just want to take the next step in my life as far as moving on from the military. And you either deny that you were in the military or you just gotten so far away from the military to you even forgot that some of the things that you were suffering from or are suffering from was the results of was the come from the results of you being in the military. So I need you to get down there and get the help that you need. I need you to stop acting like everything is okay. A lot of the things that you are paying for out of your pocket or you're stressing out because you may not have enough money to pay for, the VA have a lot of good resources and stepping stones that can help you. I know the system sometimes can be a very hard system to navigate through because I'm going through some of that myself. I wanted, I'm starting my own veteran business, which is Vet Talk. And I've been having issues with even just getting help with the name. So I understand. But you know why I'm willing to go through all that? Because I want to help you, not only spiritually, but I want to help you naturally too. Because I believe the natural can take care of the spiritual in most cases. There may be things that you're doing naturally that is affecting your spiritual. So I'm willing to help with both sides, not just one. I don't want to give you natural help without giving you spiritual help. 
But then I don't want to try to give you all of the spiritual help, but naturally you're suffering because you may not know nothing about what you're putting in your body, what you're reading, what you're looking at on TV, what you're listening to, you know, the things that you may be around. So let's take care of both veteran brothers and sisters. Let's not just focus on one. Let's focus on both of them. And I pray that you reach out to the VA, VA va.gov, DAV, and all these different organizations that are out there to help you. This is your boy, Brother Vince, Vet Talk Out.